Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. And in today's talk, I want to address the very important question of how do we know someone is our twin flame? I asked this question a great deal at the start of my own initiation. And indeed I've remained in very deep inquiry with it uh, all throughout the entirety of my path. Um, because when this phenomenon showed up for me in my field, uh, I had not heard of twin flames until it showed up in a very uh, uh, striking way in my reality. And naturally, naturally I was skeptical <laughs> as, as I think one would be. Um, I recommend a very healthy dose of skepticism around twin flames. Um, because the notion of it, right? Like once I started looking it up, it actually, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, right? <laughs> this idea that there is one person out there who is destined for us, uh, you know, as our, as our eternal soulmate, right? That we are one soul split into two bodies and that it is written in the stars that in this lifetime, we will surely come together. Right. And, um, and I'm just going to say it, man, like it's creepy. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Right. Can we talk about the fact that, that this narrative is, I have so often seen it used in a way that is attempting to impose our will or our control onto another person in a way that ironically is, is not at all a loving thing to do. Right. If I say, oh, I have received these signs, I have seen these synchronicities and therefore you are my twin flame. Right. How do I know if you're my twin flame? Oh, I know you're my twin flame. So therefore you're my twin flame. And, and therefore we are meant to be right. And uh, uh, I wager that is not going to get anyone very good results because that's a very creepy thing to say to someone. If someone if, if there is any kind of destiny, if there is any kind of fate, right? Um, well, if that's true, then it's gonna, ha it's either gonna happen, <laughs> right? Or if it's not, if you're wrong about it, then it's not gonna happen. And, you know, there was no point in trying to use that to convince someone about it, right? By the time I finally accepted that the twin flame path might be a real thing, you know, it was almost a year into the path and I finally just decided to, to do it and find out if it was real because there were so many things that were showing up in my reality um, that, that, that were pointing toward that. And doing the path, this is the irony, this is where the paradox comes in. Doing the path means releasing attachment. So everywhere where you're like, oh, that person's my twin flame and we're meant to be together, that's like actually, like to do the path correctly, that's actually the thing that you need to most let go of. That's why um, this paradox can be so challenging. <laughs> One of many reasons anyway. So I'll talk a little bit about what happened for me um, and how I ended up following this path. But ultimately I want to just come back to this idea of how do I know if someone is my twin flame Oh, you know, because you do the path <laughs> and if you do the path and it works out, then congratulations, they were your twin flame. Um, and if they weren't, um, then you would lose them along the path at some point. And maybe they would come back at the end if they were. Maybe you would actually have to be with that loss for a while. Maybe that loss would actually be part of the path. But for folks who are really caught up in this question of how do I know if they're my twin and then, then if they are my twin, well, oh, then we're fated to be together. Um, it just doesn't work that way. I was browsing along a Twin Flame Facebook group earlier today um, that I joined recently. I joined a bunch in like 2018, 2019 when I was trying to figure things out. And, um, and I left them, <laughs> I left them all, um, <laughs> either I was booted out because people didn't like my ideas that I was talking about, um, because they were kind of, uh, confrontational or, or controversial to, to people who were perhaps really, really, in, uh, invested, you know, in their attachment to the connection. 
um, or or I just left them because the distortions were really too much and I really need to have my own clear headedness on the path and trust my own my own intuition and I'm glad that I did that uh, but I recently rejoined one to see if they had changed at all and um, man like there's people in there talking about how they have lost their jobs because their twin flame reported them to management as making them uncomfortable, as taking them aside and saying, I feel like we have this strong soul connection and why are you ignoring me? Or, you know, um, and literally, you know, and and people are, are normalizing this, right? I saw this today, just, you know, oh yeah, well, you know, some you can always get another job. You can't get another twin flame. And oh my goodness, you guys, you guys, oh, it hurts my heart. <laughs> it hurts my heart because of course the paradox of the twin flame path is that it is only when we are able to to release our twin flame to say no you know what actually i can find a love connection out there that that is just as good or maybe even better that's at the very least suits my needs in this moment it is only when we're able to do that that we can actually come from a place of true detachment and allowing our twin flame to either choose us out of their free will or not. So, whew, I really want to stress that codependence, which is a pattern that I have had in my own past, so I'm very, very familiar with it. Codependence will make us feel like abandonment is tantamount to death, right? that rejection, that not being loved by the object of our affection is the worst thing that can happen. And what will happen then is that our minds will, will conjure scenarios in which um, we are not being rejected in order to self-soothe us, in order to tell us the things that we want to hear. And I think for me, um, I was so wary of that already um, because I was codependent and and I did want to want to hear only what I wanted to hear. Um, and so to combat that for the longest time, I became a pickup artist <laughs> where I could actually learn to calibrate myself in the moment and pick up feedback, right? Pick up those IOIs, those indicators of interest, right? To know whether someone was actually into me or not, right? And that actually wasn't the right path either because then I was constantly like monitoring, you know, I wasn't able to just be free and in the present, I was just constantly like, do they like me, do they like me, do they like me, right? Uh, but the very least I knew, like at least I'm trying to um, to, to, to take realistic feedback and, and, and um, not impose a, a, an idea on someone, right? When the twin flame path showed up for me, I was like, good Lord, this is why I got into pick up to begin with, because I didn't want to be this person. I didn't want to be this person who was like, oh, I think you and I are destined to be together. Um, cause, <laughs> cause it's, 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 it's creepy. It's, it's, it's so much, you know, when I speak up about the twin flame path, I'm so aware that I'm speaking out, um, with so much stigma that is in the field around this path and, uh, understandably so, right? But it did show up for me in ways that were unmistakable to the point where I finally said, okay, I'm just gonna try and do it. And I guess I'll figure out if it's real by virtue of if I try it and I do it and it works, <laughs> then I guess it was, right? And the way that you do it, the way that you make it work is, is by releasing attachment, giving yourself anything that you want to get from your twin flame that they're not giving you because it is only when you are in the wholeness of something. It's only when you are in the having of something that you can also attract it from without, right? I'm really glad that I did not know about the concept of twin flames until it showed up in my reality because I'm quite certain that my brain easily could have made up a million justifications why my karmic partners, why the people that I really was not destined to be with were, you know, were fit the twin flame mold. And so the point is there's really only one way to know and that's just by doing it. And the worst case scenario is that if they are not your twin flame, 
well, then you have made some steps along the path to wholeness anyway. You have given yourself some things that you wanted from another person that they weren't willing to give you. And now you have added to your personal growth. You have added to your wholeness. You have managed to see a place of lack or scarcity within you that you thought you could get fulfilled through another person and you've managed to give it to yourself. And congratulations, right? That is always a healthy thing to do, whether someone is your twin flame or not. Whenever I encounter a situation and I want something from someone that they don't want to give me, when I notice that they don't want to give it to me, then I know that the smartest thing for me to do is to detach from my idea that I have to get it from this person in particular and then allow the universe to bring it to me from wherever it wants to come from. That is the essence of the twin flame path. I will say that the notable characteristics that stood out to me um, as to why I was on the twin flame path in the first place was um, stuff I've talked about in other videos, specifically polarity, right? You can see yourself mirrored in this other person and not just in the sense of like, oh, everyone's your mirror. Everyone's always teaching you about yourself. Yes, that might be true. But in this sense, I actually mean like um, in a, a almost geometric sense that whatever, however, however much your expression is to one polarity, the other person will mirror you in that it will be. So if you're looking at things like attachment styles, right, anxious and avoidant attachment will mirror one another. Um, trauma responses such as hyper arousal and desensitization, right brain, left brain, masculine, feminine, all of these wonderful, delicious pairs of opposites that we have, those will show up. And in my case, I noticed those polarities between me um, and the person who catalyzed this path in me literally within 24 hours of meeting. And it was a, a full month later before I would even learn about the concept of twin flames. But immediately I recognized like, oh, this is so interesting. Me and this person, it's like, it's like we're the same, but, but opposite, like where they go this way, I go this way. And, and you know, that, that we could almost measure ourselves by seeing the distance that the other person is from that zero point of balance, right? So, um, so that, and, and also, you know, the fact that signs and synchronicities will start showing up in your reality far beyond, you know, just, oh, I looked at the clock and I saw 11, 11, um, things that you did not think were possible, things that magic will start working in ways that will utterly confound your idea of what reality could be, right? At least that was in my case, what happened um, to the point where, where things were really, really undeniable. And importantly, a lot of my own patterns started showing up for me organically. A lot of the places where I was using misguided strategies and coping mechanisms in order to try and get what I wanted out of relationship, those were made very clear to me right away. Sometimes just by thinking another logical few steps and just having a thought occur in my mind. Sometimes by seeing the reaction um, from the person in the twin flame dynamic with me and realizing that the strategy that I was using was not actually helpful uh, in that situation. Um, but regardless, it was unique in that no other relationship had brought those things up for me before in that strong of a capacity. But the most important one, the most important one is if you do do the path and you bring yourself into balance and you harmonize your polarities and you achieve wholeness within yourself and fulfillment, whether that person shows up for you at that point, that should really be the key indicator of whether you they are your twin flame or not. To ask that at the beginning of the journey, we want to just have a lightness around these things. We want to be able to say, um, I'm going on this path. I don't know where it's going to lead me. I'm going to trust in the universe to guide me. I'm going to be ruthlessly discerning with the standards that I set for the signs that show up for me because I don't want my confirmation bias to take over and allow me to, to delude myself into a path that actually is not meant for me. And more and more, I'm going to focus on my own healing and my own wholeness. And that's why it makes me really sad when I hear people say like, oh, you can always get another job. You can't get another twin flame. Um, because it's actually things like finding our purpose and finding equilibrium 
and balance in our lives um, and, and doing work that hopefully fulfills us and creating stability in our lives and allowing ourselves to be fully expressed and living our best life possible that is the thing that attracts our twin. And I'm not saying like our purpose is, is you know, our, I'm not in that capitalistic paradigm of like our purpose is our productivity, right? Please don't mistake it for that. But we do want to be aligned with living our, our, our highest purpose, our full expression, because that is the point at which we are going to attract our twin. Cloying or grasping at our twin is not going to help us when what we really need is detachment, unconditional love, and allowing a person to show up for us out of their full agency and their own choice. And asking, is this person my twin? I understand because I was there and I wanted to know if the path was real, but ultimately what served me was the attitude and the belief of saying, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if this path is real, because if it is, then I won't need to know or convince anyone. I'll just need to do the work and everything else will fall into place. And from this vantage point where I stand now, that is still my staunch recommendation. So how do you know if someone is your twin flame? You know, because if you do the work, they will show up. And that way, if they are a karmic partner or they are someone that you are merely projecting your own unfulfilled desires onto in a way that they do not reciprocate, then the path will make that clear too. So you come into wholeness and you see who meets you there. And I really think that is, I really think that's the only way to do it. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> and if you're on this path, good luck. You have my, my sincere best wishes because it is certainly challenging. And one of the greatest challenges is maintaining your own sanity throughout an, an episode of, of remarkable spiritual crisis. And uh, anyone who's able to stay grounded through that, my hat goes off to you. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.